Dear Professor Gordon, um, you were awarded the Nobel Prize together with Shinya Yamanaka in 2012 for your research in pluripotent stem cells. Let me tell you that you are the third Nobel laureate that we have in our society as honorary members. Already in the 60s, you did some experiments uh, with respect to nuclear transfer in the frog. And these experiments showed that mature cells uh, have uh, the possibility to be reprogrammed into pluripotent uh, cells, and also that these cells retain their genetic content. Professor, do you consider that nuclear transfer embryonic stem cells constitute the gold standard in pluripotency? Are they similar? Are they very different uh, from uh, iPS cells? Well, it's a reasonable question and uh, I think it's still under discussion. There have been papers published which argue that the embryos resulting from nuclear transfer are in some ways better than those produced by IPS procedure, but the methods improve all the time and maybe IPS procedure will eventually produce just as good uh, embryo cells as the nuclear transfer. So uh, what is there in the egg, in the egg cytoplasm, that drives reprogramming? Well, this is the question that has been occupying me for the last 30, 40 years or more. We know some of the molecules involved and we know some of the steps required for this, but I'm sure there is more to be discovered and that's what we are working on a lot. So to some extent we do know, but not completely. You still perform experiments yourself in the lab, that you still uh, work hands-on uh, doing uh, certain manipulations in the lab? Uh, I do. I spend a significant time doing my own experiments and I think it has paid off over the years. I've been fortunate to find out some unexpected things throughout my career and that would not have happened if I had not been doing some of these experiments myself. You have been called the grandfather or the godfather of cloning and this uh, discipline, your, your work in this field has raised ethical dilemmas. Can you give us your opinion about this? I will give you one uh, response to that. Uh, Bob Edwards, who is famous for his in vitro human fertilization, he told me that when he first uh, made known his ability to do human in vitro fertilization, he had the most terrible letters. People would say, this is unnatural, I hope you die burning in hell and all this kind of thing, really vicious letters. But as soon as he succeeded making an individual called Louise Brown, the ethicists just disappeared like moles. They went to the ground and they weren't there anymore because once people could see the benefit of it, they, they, they forgot these ethical issues. Um, do you think that uh, cell therapy with uh, pluripotent stem cells will become a reality in the near future? And for what kind of diseases do you think this will be applied? The most immediate benefit probably from this um, cell replacement field is going to be testing drugs because you can have these human cells in culture and some of them seem to represent human diseases so that will surely lead to some useful drugs. In the long term, I believe that cell replacement will also be very helpful. And the best example of this has to do with the um, treatment of, of eye disorder. It's a thing called age-related macular degeneration. And it's possible to supply the required retinal pigmented epithelium cells and implant them into the eye and that is looking like it can uh, at least arrest deterioration and possibly even help. To finish the interview, I wanted to ask you what would be your recommendation for young scientists that are starting their careers? I would say that if someone shows a real interest, enough to be prepared to work very hard and apply themselves, they don't give up. Better to do something that you're really interested in than something you're not.
professor asks, you won't be able to come to Munich to our annual meeting, to the opening ceremony, to get the award. I wanted to take the opportunity to uh, give you the award, the honorary membership of our society. Well, thank you, of course, and thank you, your, your, thank your society enormously for the great honor of honorary membership, which I'm enormously grateful for. And um, I'm sorry not to be free to come to your meeting, but uh, I, am, I really appreciate this honorary membership and would like to thank you and your members very much for bestowing this honor on me.